Today, I have nine tips to help you create better mid-journey videos. And if you missed my previous demo and tips video, I'll leave a link below. My first tip answers a common question, how to stop mouth movement on a character. The video model wants things to move, right? So when you have a character, it's going to lean towards animating them through body movement, facial expressions, or talking. To stop mouth movement, try using phrases like character is silent, quiet, or no talking. This works pretty well on most character images, regardless if their mouth is already opened or closed. Just keep in mind that if you do have a starting frame like this, where the characters are already very expressive, it might take a few tries to get them to be quiet. In this example, I was a bit more detailed and said that they close their mouths and remain silent while staring at each other. This was one of the results from my first try of this prompt. Unlike the image models, the video model has very few parameters that you can use in your prompts. One that you can use though is dash dash raw. I touched on this in my last video tips video, but it's especially worth reiterating its application to the video model. When you submit a video prompt, there's an LLM that automatically tries to improve your prompt before creating the video. This can be really helpful in many cases, but sometimes it might not be effective at interpreting the original intent of your prompt. To get around this, include dash dash raw in your prompt when using manual mode. This tells the model to use your prompt as is and bypasses the influence of that LLM, which can lead to improved prompt adherence and better control over your results. My next tip is to plan your starting frame. The video model works best by animating elements that are already in your scene. I know that's not always realistic, but it is a good guideline. If you want your main character to interact with an object or another character, try to have all characters and items visible in the scene from the start. This is especially important when using character or omni reference to create two character scenes that you plan to animate, because both characters need to be in your starting image. You cannot introduce a new reference character later since the video prompts do not support the omni reference parameter. Next, order of events matters. You are the director. What do you want to happen in the sequence? Use words like first, then, next, and while to set up the order of events. Just remember that you only have five seconds in that first clip, so you may need to break your sequence across multiple video extensions. Also think about timing. Does the character pick up an object and then the camera zooms in, or is the camera slowly zooming in the whole time? For two character interactions, does the character on the left say something and then the character on the right reacts with surprise? Try to focus on just one or two actions in that first clip. If you have more things that you want to happen, get that first clip right and then use the extend button to add four seconds of a different action. You can click extend up to four times, creating a final video up to 21 seconds long. You can introduce new items into a scene, but you want to think carefully about how the new object is introduced so that it doesn't just appear out of nowhere. For example, here I have a scene with a character and I want him to put on a hat. There's no hat anywhere in my image, so where does it come from? First, I prompted for the camera to dolly backwards, revealing a table with a hat on it, while he walks forward. Then I extended the video and changed the prompt so that he reaches for the hat and puts it on his head. And it worked pretty well. Next, how do you keep the camera still? This can be a tricky one. Phrases like static shot, tripod mounted shot, fixed camera shot, and locked off camera shot can work. So far, I've had the best luck with using either fixed camera shot or locked down camera shot combined with low motion. You're looking at a few different examples here, but it's really important to understand the native motion that your starting frame suggests. Scenes that look calm to begin with will be easier to keep stable. If your starting frame is a car chase scene, it's more likely that the camera will want to follow the cars or move to keep them in the frame. If you want the camera to stay still while the cars pass on by, Using fixed camera shot may not be enough. You may need to get more detailed and explain that the cars pass out of the frame and reveal a calm, empty street, for example. You need to give Midjourney more of a reason for the camera to stay still. This isn't going to work perfectly for all types of shots. Some scenes just have too much implied motion. This was one of the results that I got in my first try of this prompt, but it did take me six or seven different attempts before I found a prompt that worked well enough. And for good measure, let's quickly cover a few other camera motion phrases. To move the camera in or out, you can use zoom, dollies in or dollies backwards, or something like camera moves towards or camera pulls away from the subject. Like I mentioned a minute ago, the success of these phrases will depend on the motion implied by your starting scene. I really like using camera dollies backwards. 
This can also work really well when paired with the word revealing like I did earlier with the guy putting on the hat. It gives Midjourney more of a reason to follow your camera instruction because now it has to show us something new in the scene. Use pan left or right if you want the camera to turn from a fixed position and consider what might be entering the frame. You might say camera pans left toward and then describe what's coming into view. For moving the camera upward, you can try camera cranes up into the air or camera rises high above. Here's an example where I combined upward camera movement with tilting down. If you're planning to create multiple video clips or scenes and want them to have a cohesive look, I recommend using a style reference or a mood board when creating your starting frames. You can use an image as a style reference or type in a code number that is linked to a predetermined style in Midjourney's style space. Using a style reference will give you more consistent styling across multiple images. A mood board is similar to a style reference taking inspiration from images that you provide, but it allows for a bit more diversity in your results. You can create a mood board by going to the Personalize page. The more diverse your mood board is, the more diverse your results will be. If you'd like to learn more about the differences between mood boards and style references, you can check out this video. And I have a set of more than 400 curated SREF codes and a PDF guide that I'll link below. I've just updated it with a brand new batch of V7 SREF codes that I'm really excited about. So if you've already purchased the full set on my Gumroad or Patreon shops, you can go download the updated PDF for free. And for fun, try some visual effects. Add particle effects with phrases like golden light particles float upward, or maybe a glitchy VHS effect. You don't really have to say anything about the scene itself unless you feel that it's needed. You can just type in the effect that you want and see what happens. Here I tried spontaneous flowering and spontaneous combustion. And in this example, I asked for some floating heart emojis while he reads the paper. You can even add speech bubbles with text by prompting something like a speech bubble appears above their head with the particular word or phrase in quotes that you want to appear in the bubble. I hope you found these tips helpful, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where you'll find all of my monthly prompt collections, exclusive videos, and other mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.